Welcome back to First Things First. We're going viral. The PGA posted a bunch of Instagram videos of Tiger Woods practicing at Torrey Pines for this week's Farmers Insurance Open. Now, we haven't seen Tiger in action since he finished in the middle of the pack at the Hero World Challenge in early December. Cece, how excited will you be to see Tiger back? So excited. Huge fan of Tiger Woods. Yep. I've traveled around the country watching him play. Probably watched him play at the Masters maybe 10 to 12 times. Wow. I'm looking forward to him playing a full slate. He said that he's up, his body can handle practicing now. So part of Tiger's success was how hard he used to practice an amount of time. So hadn't been healthy, full healthy, or played a full season since 2012, at five wins on the tour. He's healthy, I believe he gets back in the winner's circle, which is great for golf and great for sports. Aside from a team knocking off the Warriors, Nothing would make me happier in sports than Tiger winning another major. I don't need him to beat Jack. I just want him to win one more major. I want Ty I want one more Sunday at a major of Tiger fist, bump fist pumps. That's what I want. I want to, he, I feel like he deserves it. I feel like the sporting public deserves it. I hope for that. So his health is obviously the biggest factor of that. So this is a step in the right direction. I don't need him to win. I like tuning in every Sunday to see where he is. It's just something I, I used to do all the time. And no I doubt. And I've stopped basically watching tournaments when Tiger stopped playing the tournaments. You and I both. Yep. All right, time for some stories to start your morning. Interesting news out of Cowboy Land. Jerry Jones said about Jason Garrett, quote, he's not on my hot seat. And that's news to Cowboy fans, I'm sure. CC, is it a good move sticking with Garrett here? Absolutely. Dallas needs to keep tinkering, not with the coaching staff. I mean, they've made some adjustments as far as the assistant coaches, so that's good. Not their head coach. There's only a few guys who can coach the Dallas Cowboys with Jerry Jones as the owner. And Jerry's satisfied with him. They need to solve their wide receiver problems, their lack of big play problems. And next year, they won't be dealing with an Ezekiel Elliott suspension hanging over the franchise. So, no, this franchise has made progress with the players they've drafted, and they've done a great job. Add a couple little players to that, and the Dallas Cowboys are right back in the playoffs. Jason Garrett is the right guy for that job. The only disaster season they've had under Garrett was the year Romo got hurt, and they had no plan. They yes. Had, the, the other year Romo got hurt, Dak was there, and they, and they played great. I, this is a big year for Jason Garrett. Now, with no Zeke suspension, with Dak in year three, mm -hmm. whatever they do with this, this team needs to be in the playoffs next year. But I'm not ready to move on from Jason Garrett. He's not a perfect head coach. He's not one of the five best head coaches. But he's right around to me, of just above average of NFL head coaches. And when you replace him, you might get, I mean, maybe you get Doug Peterson, but maybe you get Ben McAdoo. Like, so you, I, I would stay the course. And it is a very hard team to coach Monday through Saturday, let alone yes. Sunday. All right, to so the NBA now. Kevin Durant is having a drama-filled season. Last night, he was tossed for arguing with a ref. His fourth ejection on the year after the game, he said the ref was trying to get him. Nick, does Kevin Durant have a legitimate gripe? No, nah, man, not if you watched this. He got his first technical arguing that he didn't foul someone when he wasn't called for a foul. Uh, someone else was. He got his second technical. Look, Draymond's trying to talk him out of it, pushes him away. KD won't let it go. He's not playing defense. He's still yelling. He has four ejections. That's more than any other team in the league. He has ten technicals. That's more than anyone else in the league except for his teammate Draymond. Why are you so angry, KD? And he forced this one. Yeah. Like, he sought out all the referees, yeah. even the referee <laughs> that he had a beef with. He didn't call the second technical on him. It was his, it was his partner, okay. one of the other three referees, who ended up giving him the second technical to go out, Kevin Durant. You said that you thought that there was a passing of the torch when you made the big three against Cleveland in game number three. Well, then, if, 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 if there was any truth to that, this is not the image of the face of the basketball world, Kevin Durant, all right? Let's get back to acting like you used to act. Very, very humble kid. Remember the speech, the real MVP, all right? Let's get back to that guy. Real quick, all-star teams are announced, right? Yes. 24 all-stars. Those 24 all-stars have accounted for 13 suspensions, or ejections. Seven of those ejections are the all-stars on the Warriors. All the other all-stars have accounted for six. Like, it, it's him. It's straight. It's unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. KD, so angry. All right, finally, LeBron James became one of seven players in NBA history to score 30,000 points and the youngest player to join the exclusive club. However... Cavs lost to an undermanned Spurs team. LeBron spoke about the accomplishment after the game. This is a special moment. It's something I, I never set out to do. 
Um, you know, I'm not even like a score first guy when it comes to playing basketball. I love getting my teammates involved and seeing my teammates excited about scoring and me getting assists and things of that nature. But uh, for me to sit here and be the youngest player to ever reach 30,000, um, you know, it's just a uh, I put a lot of I put a lot of work into my game, and that's just a it's been a byproduct of that. CC, how impressive is is thirty thousand points? Oh, it's very impressive. And and LeBron, he might not have set out his goal was for thirty thousand points, but his goal was to be the best basketball player ever. And there's no way he'd ever be in the breath of the top five basketball players ever unless he gets to thirty thousand points. So that was going to be along the journey. The thing that's most impressive of all the seven guys on the list. LeBron is the only natural. My first instinct is to pass the basketball. These other guys, man, they were born to score the basketball. I mean, let's go down the list, Nick. Mm -hmm. Who's number one? Kareem. The most unstoppable offensive player. Number two, who? Carl Malone. Carl Malone. Just, I, mean, I mean, just 25 points every night for 15 years. Uh, number three. Kobe. Kobe, stop it. Kobe was in the womb <laughs> getting buckets, turnarounds, everything. Next, Michael Jordan. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Let's, that, 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 that speaks for itself. And we could go on and on. Well, the next like, two, Wilt, who had a 100-point yeah. game and averaged 50, and then Dirk, the greatest shooting big man ever. Yes, yeah, so LeBron and his overall unselfishness to be on this list, it's not about longevity. It's truly amazing. And if you compile the assist of the other six, you would be astonished at just how good LeBron has been and unselfish to be on this. These are not things that go together, being unselfish and being one of the top seven scorers that's ever played in the NBA. And listen, he'll pass Dirk later this year. He'll pass Wilt and Michael Jordan next year. And so, I mean, he, he might not get to Kareem. I think he will get to Kareem. But the worst he finishes is top three scorers all time. I, he's, as CeCe mentioned, the unselfishness. He's the youngest to get to 30,000. He's the only player ever to get to 30,000 points, 7,000 rebounds, 7,000 assists. And I'm confident that's something no one else will ever do. Like yes. the, the, that volume of scoring combined with that volume of rebounding and assists, it's remarkable. But the, the most, and I know the Cavs are in a bad way right now. They're going to have to make changes. LeBron's been part of that. But if we're just going to go from 30,000 feet, if I may, and look at his career. The most impressive thing to me about LeBron James is he was the most hyped high school athlete I've ever seen. And certainly of this era, <laughs> of an era of 24-7 sports radio, to television media. networks, social media, all of that. And not only did the hype not crush him, not only did he not fail to meet the hype, he somehow exceeded the hype. The most hyped prep athlete ever exceeded all of the hype. And a guy who grew up in a tough situation, moving around, a single mother who had her own issues, to never have a scandal, to never have an arrest. Man, I, don't, I, I, I would say there's maybe only one person on this desk that can say they've never had an, a, a run-in with the police. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to go. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Oh, maybe. Oh, I didn't know, Jenna. The, I mean, the, do, do you know how hard it is to be in the public eye for 35 years, 33 years, yeah. or I guess 23 years for him, uh, and nev never ever run him with the police, never have some awful tabloid incident. His biggest scandal was a premature pep rally in a press conference that people didn't like, like. That he gave the money away to charity. Right. The biggest black mark on his career ended with $4 million for the Boys and Girls Club. I, it's remarkable. It has been one of the most remarkable child celebrity stories outside of sports that we've ever seen. And I just, I, when you have these moments to look at it and see what he's accomplished, it's, nice. it's I didn't think about it really unreal. It's great, Nick. All right, at some point in the not-too-distant future, speaking of superstar athletes, the name Tom Brady will be used as an adjective describing excellence at any level at any age. Here, I'll use it in a sentence. Hey, Deanna, you were so Tom Brady in your music class today. <laughs> The Patriots quarterback is heading to a record eighth Super Bowl, his third in four years. He's on pace, if he hasn't already, to secure himself as the greatest quarterback of all time. CC, I'll start with you. Is Tom Brady the greatest athlete of all time? Wow, this is very, very difficult because uh, we, we've given him the, the title of the greatest quarterback. Now, the, the problem with, with athlete, you start getting into, well, who's more athletic? 
or skill and, sets, yeah. And it, 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 it's, it's really, really hard. It's hard to compare the greatest basketball player, me, ever, Michael Jordan, with who Tom Brady being the greatest quarterback. Because I could go to Jim Brown. Jim Brown, we as Hall of Famers consider him to be the greatest of the Hall of Famers for what he accomplished. Now, Tom Brady, he has taken his game and as a Hall of Famer to new standards because of longevity. So you're going to have to be able to consider that. Basketball players, though, they play offense and they play defense. I mean, the Patriots have won a few championships by a guy kicking the ball and by guys intercepting the ball. Like Tom Brady was actually sitting on the sideline and got championships. So to me, it's hard to compare him to people like Jordan, to people like Muhammad Ali as boxers, because you got to be offensive and defensive. So he's there. I don't like to separate him. I would not like to say he's the greatest athlete ever. I think that he is in the breath of the five greatest athletes that I've been able to see in my lifetime. But when you talk about all-round athletes, because I asked Jim Brown this question. Jim Brown, who's the greatest football player? He, he shocked me, knocked me off my feet. He told me. Amendola. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jim Thorpe. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, my goodness. Hadn't even thought about him. I mean, these guys play both ways. He was an unbelievable athlete who happened to play football. So Tom Brady is in that breath. What we're seeing from the time he's turned 30 to whenever he quits, I believe will make him very, very special. And, yes, he will always be in the conversation of the greatest of the greats. What is, to stay on Brady for a second here, what's so amazing about Brady being in this discussion, he's the only person in the who is the greatest athlete of all time discussion who's not a great athlete. Like, who's not, by that I mean, he doesn't have amazing, natural, some people would call them God-given physical traits. Like, he is not incredibly fast. He is not, he, he's not, he doesn't, you, Mark Schlereth yesterday said he knows he won the genetic lottery. He's touched by the hand of God to get some certain things. We look at certain guys, Jim Brown, for example. People don't know this. He's the greatest lacrosse player ever. Yes. They yes. had to change the rules. Yes. Like, he, 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 when he retired from two sports, is the best ever in those sports. You look at a guy like LeBron. Who I, LeBron could have been amazing at a bunch of sports. Like, maybe not the best in the world at them. You, so, Brady... Brady doesn't have those physical gifts. No. And some, he's got more physical gifts than I do. But, like, but compared to the guys that he is in the discussion, he's look at how he ran at the combine. Look at what he was in college. Right. I would say that how he throws the football and his ability to be accurate is a gift. Sure. Yeah, I, uh, agreed. But you, do you understand what I'm saying? Like the athleticism. He can throw the football and as accurate as Steph can shoot the ball. Sure, and Steph's another guy that I would say is not like right. not an amazing natural athlete, like in, in compared to these other people. So it, he's on, he's on, he's in the club, like along with Wayne Gretzky, with the right. I, the, it, that's a guy you got to consider. Uh, I would say people get mad, like Barry Bonds, when we're talking about like teams, guys that could do <laughs> all things. The, Go ahead. You're the kind of guy that doesn't like to compare apples to oranges ever, and this is one of the perfect examples where you got to keep these guys in their own lane. Wayne Gretzky is the greatest hockey player I ever saw play, far and away. But you put him on a you put him on a basketball court, you put him on a football field. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, and where Gretzky was compared to the second greatest player. Of course. You you you, you have Gretzky. to mention that. I mean, Man, he was amazing. Of course. And the talent level at this point where athletes are getting bigger and stronger and smarter and faster, to even be considered one of the greatest, one of the greatest athletes at your position or within your sport is unbelievable enough. I think it's very hard to compare and cross over and say, well, who's the best athlete? LeBron has unbelievable gifts, the likes of which the strength, the mobility, the flexibility I've never seen. But who knows if he could do the same thing with his accuracy that Tom Brady could or get a puck in a little air at the time. So I think these guys are definitely at the top of the game. I think it's very hard to say he's the greatest athlete. Yeah, Tom's ability to perform at an advanced age will always have him in a very, very special class. His ability to be able to get his team in championship position will always have him in a very, very special class. I believe I said yes, uh, yesterday or two days ago, Tom's going to win seven Super Bowls. So when he's done, you're going to have to talk about him. Athletic, non-athletic, he will be part of all conversations when you talk about the greatest who have done it in all sports. And the ability to stay healthy. 
Like, that's a huge, like, I give guys credit for that. The, the longevity is an enormous part of this. I, I know there's almost nothing more cliche in sports talk than Mount Rushmore's, so allow me to do one quickly if I could. I, the, I try to think about this when we talk about the greatest athletes of all time. Like, what, what are some sports that have been going on forever? Golf. Since the beginning of time, no, since the beginning of time, people want to know who can win in a fight. So the greatest, to me, the greatest fighter of all time has to be on there. That's Muhammad Ali. Since the beginning of time, people have wondered, who's the fastest guy out here? Who can run, whether it's from lions or saber-toothed tigers or whatever? Usain Bolt. So he's got to be on there. I also want to be fair to all people. Who's the greatest female athlete of all time? Serena Williams. She's got to be on there. That leaves one spot for the greatest team athlete ever. Some people would have Michael Jordan. Some people would have Tom Brady. I have LeBron James, but that's Brady is in that discussion of all sports history is, is his face on the mountain. It damn well might be. And he's not done playing. It's remarkable. I have a different mountain range, but we'll get to that. in a Ali, Vault, that? Serena, LeBron. There you go. There yeah, it is. Like There's it. your four. Coming up, can Doug Peterson go toe to toe with Bill Belichick? Maybe not on paper, but that's next on First Things First. Did he say a saber tooth tiger? <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure I'm...